West is in the southern part of the mainland, spoken by the incoming black population. This was a consequence of the importation of African slaves to work on the sugar plantations, a practice started by the Spanish as early as 1517. From the early 17th century, ships from Europe traveled to the West African coast, where they exchanged cheap goods for black slaves. The slaves were shipped in barbarous conditions to the Caribbean islands and African coast, where they were in turn exchanged for such commodities as sugar, rum, and molasses. The ships then returned to England, completing an Atlantic Triangle of Journeys. And the process began again. The first 20 African slaves arrived in Virginia on a Dutch ship in 1619. By the time of the American Revolution, 1776, their numbers had grown to half a million, and there were over 4 million by the time slavery was published. At the end of the U.S. Civil War, 1865, the policy of the slave traders was to bring people of different language backgrounds together in the ships to make it difficult for groups to plot a rebellion. The result was the growth of several pigeon forms of communication, and in particular a pigeon between the slaves and the sailors, many of whom spoke English. For for the sociolinguistic situation in contemporary Canada, C. Harriman and Burnaby, 1996, Chapter 7, 39 English as a Global Language once arrived in the Caribbean. This pidgin English continued to act as of communication between the black population and the new landowners, and among the blacks themselves. Then, when their children were born, the pidgin gradually began to be used as a mother tongue producing the first black Creole speech region. It is this Creole English which rapidly came to be used throughout the southern plantations and in many of the coastal towns and islands. At the same time, standard British English was becoming teach variety throughout the area because of the emerging political influence of Britain. Creole forms of French Spanish and Portuguese were also developing in and around the Caribbean, and some of these interacted with both and the standard varieties of English. The Caribbean islands, and parts of the adjacent Central and South American mainland, thus came to develop a remarkably diverse range of varieties of English, reflecting their individual and cultural histories. Five moreover, West Indian speech did not stay within the Caribbean islands, but moved well outside, with large communities eventually found in Canada, the USA and Britain, Australia, New Zealand towards the end of the 18th century. The continuing process of British world exploration established the English language in the Southern Hemisphere. The numbers of speakers have never been very large, by comparison with those in the Northern Hemisphere, but the varieties of English which have emerged are just as distinctive. Australia was visited by James Cook in 1770. In 20 years Britain had established its first penal colony at Sydney, thus relieving the pressure on the overcrowded prisons in England. About 130,000 prisoners were transported during the 50 years after the arrival of the first fleet in 1788. Free settlers, as they five for review of issues relating to African American English, C. Harrison and Chubiso, 1976. For West Indian Speech in Britain, C. Sutcliffe, 1982. Why English? The historical context were called also began to enter the country from the very beginning, but they did not achieve substantial numbers until the mid-19th century. Then on, immigration rapidly increased. By 1850, 
the population of Australia was about 400,000, and by 1900 nearly 4 million. In 2002, it was nearly 19 million. The British Isles provided the main source of settlers, and, thus the main influence on the language. Many of the convicts came from London and Ireland, especially following the 1798 Irish Rebellion, and features of the Cockney accent of London and the brogue of Irish English can be traced in the speech patterns heard in Australia today. On the other hand, the variety contains many expressions which have originated in Australia, including a number from Aboriginal languages and in recent years the influence of American English and of a number of immigrant groups has been noticeable, so that the country now has a very mixed linguistic character. Six in New Zealand, whose Maori name is Aotearoa, the story of English started later and moved more slowly. Captain Cook charted the islands in 1769-70, and European whalers and traders began to settle there in the 1790s, expanding the developments already taking place in Australia. Christian missionary work began among the Maori. About 1814. However, the official colony was not established until 1840, following the Treaty of White Angie between Maori chiefs and the British Crown. There was then a rapid increase in European immigration, from around 2000 and 1840. 5,000 by 1850, and to three quarters of a million by 1900. As early as the turn of the century visitors to the country were making comments on the emergence of a New Zealand accent. The total population in 2002 was over 3.8 million strands of New Zealand's social history in the present century have had a special linguistic consequences. Firstly, in comparison with Australia, there has been a stronger sense of the historical relationship with and a greater sympathy for British values and institutions. Many people speak with an accent which seeks for the sociolinguistic situation in contemporary Australia and New Zealand.